Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. 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 Hope you enjoy. Story number one. The cat isn't the problem. Written by Perilous Platypus. Get the fucking thing out of here, Falk, or I'm gonna space it and you along with it. Falk gathered the tabby up in his muscled arms and scratched it under the chin. His efforts were immediately rewarded by a rousing chorus of purrs, prompting a grin from Falk. Go on now, Cap. Old batty work ain't the problem. Captain Odysseus Paraclina offered both of them a withering glare. Neither seemed to care much. He'd long since lost his grip on Falk. They'd been too much together to be anything less than close. But the fecking feed lion could at least show some respect. Mooching pest that it was. Things spent half of its time trying to suffocate him in his sleep, and the other half trying to trip him to death. But Falk was right. The cat wasn't the problem. At least, not today. Half the galaxy was in flames, and spacing a cat problem wasn't going to do much about it. Might make him feel a bit better, though. Though, he doubted, it'll last long. Falk loved that hull spawn almost as much as the ship. So Odd did what he always did. Settled back into his chair with an exaggerated sigh and turned to a more pressing matters, like the aforementioned galaxy burning. What a mess, he said. Falk nodded, his finger still idly scratching at Battywick's chin. Just getting messier by the day. No end in sight, neither. Shame. Galaxy had a good thing going for it for a bit. Falk offered a grunt in response. Don't agree. Think it was better this way. Odd waved a hand towards the view screen and the map depicting the various battle lines. Half were probably out of date as soon as they picked them up. But getting the general sense of the hotspots was better than jumping about completely blind. Better for us, Falk said. That's some cynical crap, even for you, Odd replied. It is what it is, Falk unceremoniously jumped Battywick on Odd's lap. The cat settled immediately in, paying not a whisker of a bit of attention to Odd's skull while Falk looked on approvingly. But at least we have each other. Falk brushed his trousers, flicked off a few strands of orange hair, and then fell back into the seat beside Odd. Where to next? Hard to say. It's salvage or smuggle. More profit if we go both. But we'll be rolling the dice. No guarantee on what we'll find, and no guarantee on getting a buyer to buy it. Easy if we take a contract. Falk snort, eloquently and succinctly established his views on the subject. Falk wasn't a fan of contracts. That sort of ran with the territory on anyone that had signed over their freedom for a ticket or for hellhole and three squares a day. High price to pay, particularly the grinders Falk came through. They didn't talk about it. Pasts were a great topic for people in their line of work, regardless of how long they'd been doing it together. The last data dump said yes, things were hot around Halva, Odd said, pulling up the galaxy mat. Terran Republic versus the Basil. Doesn't matter who comes out ahead in that. There's something worth having in the racks on both sides. Plasma loops, uh, death places, uh, light benders, Falk muttered, his eyes fixed on the map. Could be good. Could be death. Ow! Matty Wick's claws dug into Odd's thigh as the tabby began to knead. Don't push your fucking luck, cat. Odd didn't remove the tabby, though, and Batty Wick continued his kneading unabated. Falk grinned. It's good to see you getting along so well. Back to the topic. You in for Halva? It's going to be a hot hot if we dump her was right. Might catch fire ourselves. Worm for first bird. Early bird gets the worm, Odd corrected him. No, early in space, just first. Yeah, well, if we're going to get tactical, no, ain't worm either. Space worms on Gorgas 7, Odd began to absentmindedly pet Battywick. Long way between Gorgas 7 and Halva, Bulk nodded in agreement. Long way. He then he grinned, but still worms. Then we go, we go. Odd winced as the claws dug in once more. This cat is a fecking problem. Belk shook his head. Cat is not a problem. Cat can eat early bird. I thought we were going to be the first bird. No. Belk began to flick various switches, pulling up ready readouts from the ship's weapon system. Worm for first bird. First bird for first cat. End of story. Story number two. The Old God. 
Written by Slow AD 2584. The Katang Armada approached Earth. The pitifully primitive humans stood zero chance. They barely had AI, no knowledge of slick tor quantum recertainty algorithms that could infiltrate and confront any electronic device or logical device from an orbital distance. No defense fields to nullify harmonic phase laser beams. Nothing of the sort. This was going to be laughable. As the Amada approached low Earth orbit, the selector electronic warfare began. Within moments, the entire internet, satellite network telecom, and even every single radio circuit board, anything with a silicon transistor, really, was scrambled, dead, inert. The humans were instantly rendered back to the Stone Age, around 1965 or so. All of the craft climbing to orbit fell from the sky. Not a single radar ping nor radio signal was detected. The war was over before it had even started. With their superiority and even better orbital high ground, cleaning up the ground forces would be a grueling but inevitable grind. Those humans down there still had machine guns and swords, or whatever archaic thing they can find that still works down there. The Katang Planetary Assault Logistics Operation began ramping up. Uh, sir, uh, we, uh, uh, we're detecting something. What? How did they even manage to get power? What kind of program data suite are they running? How did the slick dolls miss them? Uh, sir, nothing so advanced as the sort of the data suite. Uh, it appears to be a, um, arc gap pulses, like an electric arc between conductors. Uh, the pulses seem to be tuned to bounce along the inside of the planet's ionosphere, detectable on other side of the world. Uh, it seems to be some kind of pattern, a... Uh, a, uh, signal. Get the crypto guys on it. Where is it coming from? It appears to be coming from somewhere in the middle of the taiga of what they call Northern Russia. Middle of nowhere, sir. Hold on. There was a similar arc gap signal from what they call Montana, USA. There appears to be some sort of, uh, uh communication going on. I need the crypto teams on this immediately. I want to know what they are saying. Sir... Crypto says this communication has no OS, no data library, no resource libraries to raid it. it it's just too, too primitive. Uh, they say that this is nothing they can... Uh, oh, look, it looks like it stopped. Ha! Huh. They probably ran out of power. <laughs> probably some monkey on an exercise bike or something trying to generate power manually or get tired or... Alert! Weapons launched from northern Russia. What? No vehicle should be operating down there. How? It appears to be a cylindrical rocket from some kind, analyzing a... Uh, hurry on, sir. No electronics, mechanical gyro. And, um, is that relay logic? Nothing for Slokter to grab onto. The rocket doesn't seem to have enough delta V to truly reach the escape velocity, however. Um, this may be a false alarm. Psh, pathetic! Why even bother? Okay, what kind of weapon is it? Directed energy, kinetic impactor. Give me something here. It's, uh, they're very odd, sir. There appears to be a pulse nuclear device in the nose, but it's a strange design. I bet it's nuclear pumped X-ray laser. Our energy shield should be able to absorb that. No problem. No, sir. No X-ray laser element anywhere on the device. Nothing technological at all. Uh, just fuel, gyro guidance, and a, a fission reactor. The rocket arced over the horizon and then drifted near the Katang cruiser. Okay, that cruiser there just should be able to get a better look at... Uh, a blinding flash lit up the entire orbiting fleet, alarms blaring on the bridge monitor. As the flash faded, the cruiser was a drifting wreck. A large section of the middle hull was simply vaporized. What in the hell was that? Silence those alarms! Report! What were they alerting? The alarms are Alpha Beta and uh, Gamma Particle High Energy Emissions... Uh, high energy, free neutrons. Wow. It's a real mess over there. G gamma rays? Really? What in the black could have done that? You said that there was nothing that high tech on board that... Sir, it appears to be a pulsed nuclear device in the nose of the rocket was, uh, w was not contained in a shield in any way. What? 
Who in the All Father's own universe would ever make a device like that? Even worse, be willing to ever set that thing off. Oh, uh, what would such a thing even be called? A, a naked fission event? I cannot even imagine such a thing. Apparently so, sir. It appears to have been a, the device's purpose. Where did it come from exactly? There was an underground silo in the middle of nowhere. Apparently, with its own isolated power generators and solid-state mechanical controls. Oh. Okay. Phew. So it's some sort of Hail Mary end of the world doomsday device. Just one then. Well, uh, let's see if anybody is alive on the cruiser and let's get back to... Uh, sir, sir, we, uh, we have a problem. What now? Oh, many, many more rockets just like the first one launching from similar self-contained silos buried all over northern USA and Russia. Fleet! Evasive maneuvers! I am sure we can dodge a few... No, sir. Cannot evade these numbers. Just, uh... Just, uh... Oh. Oh, father. Just too many of the damn things. But... But surely we can jump... No, sir. The initial blast had a serious electromagnetic pulse released naked, as you say. All jump drives are out of calibration. We cannot get away in time. How can this be? I need to have a serious talk with engineering. If... Sir... Our engineers never envisioned a raw nuclear reaction just set off out in the open like this, next to a running ship, just, just too. Out of the bridge's viewpoint, many, many specks of light flickered on the end of curving smoke plumes arose, arcing around both sides of the globe. It was a swarm, a freaking cloud. Uh, how many? Binacon just completed, sir. Just about 12,000. As the nuclear annihilation started to ripple from the edges of the armada, closing like a demonic claw, in the center was the flagship awaited its doom. The captain had time to send the alert to galactic community in an emergency hyperwave. The, these humans, these monsters! I don't have much time. How could they even conceive of getting a fission nuclear cascade reaction to occur exposed and open? Be warned, this is what they are capable of, and the sheer numbers of the devices. Why would they even need so many? That's enough to destroy their entire planet 20 times over. And they have stored them, maintained an operation for what appears to have been over a hundred years. Something is wrong with them. Something very seriously wrong. I... Uh, the hyperwave signal was cut off by a blinding flash and static chaos of interference caused by wild and free nuclear reaction side products shredding the carrier wave. End of story. I just quickly want to thank the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gaster, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kambaka.